The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening. This is Lowe's Moore and welcome back to The Blueprint Podcast. Um, I have to say it again. I am excited. Uh, each and every week, I'm just excited to be with you guys. The opportunity, man, to to come before you and just share, um, you know, share uh, our ideas and our thoughts uh, with you. I want to say from the get go. That's what they used to say back in the day. From the get go, they used to say, uh, "I want to say congratulations um, to the Las Vegas." Las Vegas Aces, who won the WNBA championship. I mean, congratulations to them. It, you know, I would have been happy whether Connecticut won or whether Las Vegas won. Each one of them, I mean, they've been there like three or four times. They've been right there in the championship uh, with an opportunity to win and just couldn't get it done. And but yet today, Las Vegas got it done. And uh, I mean, you know, I, I was just talking to my uh, tonight's guest. Um, we were talking a little, a little basketball to 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 start out, and uh, Chelsea Gray in the playoffs was just was just amazing. And we were talking, him. He, he's that as a coach. He was like, man, seeing Chelsea Gray play, and she was shooting some shots, and you'd be going like, no, 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 oh, good shot, you know. Uh, but. You know, it didn't Chelsea Gray's game didn't bother me. Right. Because, I mean, I was that person taking that kind of shot when the coach was like, no, no. Oh, oh, good shot. Good shot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes you you have players, you know, we all have our different roles as, as a as a player. And, you know, some of us, got, our roles are, you know, just to be, you know, to be a good role player inside uh inside the team and then you got the player that's got the game you know they're the person like you know you know they're going to shoot the shot you know that's the man right there right and so a lot of people haven't really been the man or or uh or they get mad at you know one of the craziest things that uh everybody used to get on Carmelo Anthony right uh, you know, oh, he shoot too much and he, he does this too much, you know, but they don't know what it is to be the man, right? For you to take those shots. You're supposed to take those shots. Chelsea Gray is supposed to take those shots, right? They, yeah, they look awkward, but you believe in that, right? And I was really proud of her, man, because she refused to let her team lose. And I mean, the Aces were just great throughout the whole playoffs, had a great season. And so did Connecticut. They they came back, man. They were like the cardiac kids. They, man, they just kept coming back. I thought they was going to do it again, man. They was almost there to get to that fifth game. But uh, Chelsea Gray, you know, and Wilson is like, nah, not, not today. Uh, but uh, anyway, I want to welcome you, Black back to the blueprint podcast i mean i hope you guys enjoyed uh last week's uh show i was in quarantine last week uh you know in a hotel between me and my wife and i was doing the show from the hotel and and man dr kiba uh rogers was on oh how many of you guys enjoyed that she was amazing last week and uh, hey man, you guys keep praying for me. Me and my wife, we both we both better. We both recovering, continuing to recover. Uh, you know, hey, it was some tough days, but we overcame them, and 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 we're back. You know, we we thank God that we're back, and and we're excited. So let's let me jump right into this because uh, I want to get right into it, and I want to. I want to play, pay, uh, I want to play a video 
of my book of the week. So I'm going to play this video and then I'm going to show you my uh, book of the week. Long time in the making to hopefully reach the next generation of kids that are dreaming big, um, are going to be the next you know leaders and, 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 and game changers. We want them to be inspired. We want them to be able to set their sights on, you know, what they want to accomplish in the world and really, you know, believe that it's possible. When you see your kids foster a love for reading, but also have certain topics that they get excited about, kind of have your kids in mind when you're talking about a book and then you realize that this is a kind of a universal opportunity to reach the next generation. You know, you can always go back to when I started playing basketball. You know, when I first started playing my organized basketball at nine, you know, I was undersized, scrawny, you know, never ever talked about us being the greatest at anything. And you had to, you know, go through those experiences of, you know, trying and failing. You know, a huge story in the book that I obviously resonate with so, so well, I think. That's something that most people will hopefully be able to learn from, connect with, and be inspired by. Uh, we're aware of everything that happens in the league in terms of the different storylines and rumors and all that. Uh, it is the best place to watch it all happen when you're holding a trophy and enjoying your summer. We don't need anybody to talk about us. We know what we accomplished, and you know it's about getting ready for another run that uh, we feel like we can do it again. There have been lots of great players since Michael Jordan, who I think was really the last one to kind of change the game. But, I mean, we know that you break records, but you personally, are you aware that you've opened up the floor, that kids are shooting from 35 feet out now because of you? You're still playing the game, but are you aware of what you've done? Yeah, I'm aware, but part of it is for me to keep doing what I'm doing in my career and, and hopefully stay at this level for as long as I can. There's no ever since that, you know, you've... I've hit, you know, my peak. I always feel like I can get better. So I'm motivated by how far I can stretch this. And that's the biggest message for, you know, how I change the game is how I play is definitely possible, but it, it requires a crazy amount of work that I've been doing since I was, you know, nine years old. So I don't want anybody to feel like they, they can skip steps to, to get there. Yeah, that's awesome. That's my book of the week. Um, you know, if we can show that, I, it just came out uh, last week. Um, it's called "I Have a I Have a Superpower" by Steph Curry, Stephen Curry. Um, yeah, I mean, awesome, awesome book, man. I mean, if you got some kids out there, I think we all have a superpower, right? Uh, you know, for me. You know, one of the things, you know, I used to like math growing up um, and, you know, and you have go to things like uh, I used to go to art. Art was a big, a big superpower for me, you know, just go to art class or at home drawing all the time on on everything. Right. We all have a superpower. Right. And and, uh, you know, Steph Curry talks about this in his in his book that we all have a superpower. Right. And and uh, great book just came out. Hey, man, make sure you get kids get one. Get pick up a copy uh, of Steph Curry's new book. I have we have a super I have a superpower. And then my word of the week. Right. Uh, my word of the week is. Superpower. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, we used to think about, you know, we used to think about superpower. We used to think about superpower, like America is a super, they, politically, America is a superpower. Uh, Russia is a superpower. Uh, that's the only, when you look in the dictionary, they, they, they talk about authority and power. China is a superpower, right? But sometimes we don't look at it, we don't look at it that we each, each and every one of us has a superpower, right? We have something inside of us, some gifting inside of us, something inside of us that, that causes for us uh, to be unique. And, and, and so um, I don't know what your superpower is, but we all have one. And uh, once you find it, don't be ashamed of it. Go for it. And, and then here's my affirmation, a Hill Harper, Pierce Harper affirmation quote for this week. It says, you know, great things are coming. When everything seems to be going wrong, old energy 
is clearing out for new in energy to enter. Be patient, right? Be patient. Uh, that's my affirmation and quote for this week. Um, my Pierce Hopper, Pierce uh, Hill and Pierce Hopper affirmation. So uh, check that out one more time, right? Be patient. I mean, I can I can't say that enough. How important it is to be patient, right? And and then I got my music, my music of the week and my movie of the week. Now, if you know. You know, I was a big fan of the Jackson Five when I was a young, young kid growing up, and I used to have the Jack Ride On magazine. I don't know if you guys remember Ride On magazine, but I used to have the cover and all the pages. I used to tape, tape them on the wall. The Jackson Five was kind of like our heroes. If you a hey, a hey, if you remember any of the Jackson Five songs, not not Michael Jackson, right? But the Jackson Five, the young the young Jackson Five. If you know any of those songs, man, throw it in the in the. In the comment box, man, throw up a song that you remember sung by the Jackson Five. You know, I mean, that was energy back then. Them little guys dancing around. I was little myself, but, you know, dancing around and singing, man, they just gave us energy. Right. And, uh, man, they had a superpower. Their music was a superpower. Right. And, and then here is, um, oh, yeah, ABC, you know. Oh, you know, one of my favorites was uh, Jermaine Jackson used to sing Daddy's Home. I don't know if you all remember that. That was one of my favorite songs back then. And and then uh, here's my movie of the week. Right. My movie of the week. Right. <laughs> While I was in quarantine last week, I watched a lot of Hallmark movies. Right. And, you know, the crazy thing um, is that most of them. You know, uh, the characters were were white and occasionally they were good movies. I mean, let me put it there. Romantic movies, comedies. They was good movies. Right. And I was wondering, man, does Hallmark make movies uh, with with black folks in it? And so if you see that again, if, if we can pop that back up up there. Right. If you can see Hallmark has a number of African-American or black characters in their movies. Now, I don't know when they come on, right? But they particularly, man, we get addicted during Christmas time watching Hallmark movies, right? But since I was in quarantine, man, there wasn't a whole lot on television. Yeah, I was watching Hallmark, like one, two, three movies back to back, right? And uh, they kind of got me through through the quarantine last week. So uh, my movies of the week, right? Hallmark movies, and 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 so, um, so without further ado, I don't think I have any highlights. I want to say first of all, I want to give a shout out to my cousin Chris Kelly, who had a birthday last week, um, and I want to say a shout out to him. Yeah, he, he, back in the day, he was little Chris. Now Chris is older now, but I want to say happy birthday to him, and. Uh, so we want to jump right into it. You know, we got coach Munch right on the show this evening and, uh, we're going to be talking about his life and career. Um, so coach Munch, I want Munch, I want to welcome you to the, to the blueprint. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, you look like you're in the dark there. No, hold on. Let me hit this light in cause I just got out. <laughs> Sorry for the light, but I was in the car coming back from the game. I told you, you know. Yeah, yeah. So tell us. Well, well first of all, let me let me set let let me uh kind of set the stage here. Coach Munch, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it is a basketball coach. I'm sure he coaches both genders, but right, his passion and love is for young women uh, who play basketball, and he has a program called No Limits and uh no limit and look i heard so much about him for years uh particularly some of his players uh had an opportunity i had the opportunity along with my wife my wife was the head coach and i was an assistant coach for a few years so Co coach munch has a few of her players her former high school players on his team and they used to always come uh to the to the boys and girls club 
and uh, talked to me and my wife and talked about Coach Munch all the time. Oh, Coach Munch, Coach Munch, Coach Munch. So, like, we need to figure <laughs> out who is Coach Munch. So, <laughs> so we're going to do that tonight. So, Coach Munch, you know, take us back a little bit before we get into the whole basketball thing. You know, who is Coach Munch? Munch and, and like, where'd you grow up? Mom and dad, siblings. Um, and, and then just bring us forward, bring us forward into, uh, you know, where you are currently in terms of, you know, being married, children, so forth and so on. So, uh, yeah, take us back and bring us forward. And I like to focus on, number one, the importance of family, yeah. right? The importance of education and the importance of faith. So let, let's, let's, so, so, so take us back and then bring us forward. Okay, first let me just say how I got the name Coach Munch. Um, over like 25 years ago, and if you could, I know you can't see a full, full picture of me now. Around 15 years ago, I weighed 510 pounds. Mm. So, um, but when I was young, they used to call me Munch because I just used to eat and eat and eat. I just loved to eat. And um, it, it just stuck to, with me. And um, before you knew it, again, it's something that was very unhealthy. My got real heavy and the name much just stood with me um it, it was just a, a crazy situation how it happened again um, me being my background I'm, I'm puerto rican but i'm married to a black woman her name is valerie for like 35 years i've been with her with over 40 years we've been together since high school um you know it's, it's a blessing for us to be together that long but with us, it's more than just a relationship. We friends and do everything together, you know. Um, the basketball life, just getting to where I'm at now, just being around positive people. I just try to, ever since I was young, always wanted to help people out and, you know, try to keep people on the right path. Always try to stay out of trouble. I come from a big family. I had 10 brothers and two sisters. Um, same parents. You know, my mother and father um, passed away, rest in peace, with two of my brothers. But um, a strong family, though. That's something that I could preach on all day. We are a strong family uh, to this very day. We look out for each other. Um, my oldest sister is a doctor. My other sister is, a um, like you could say, a teacher. And then my brother's a chemist. My other brother is um, all good jobs. We, we, we just, I, I could say um, God is good, really made us. Education was very important in the family, um, and that's because um, it was hard. And I'm quite sure everybody can understand having 12 people in one household, how <laughs> no. the struggle was, you know? <laughs> no, 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 not all of us. <laughs> yeah, you know. I just, thought, just I thought four, I thought, like, you know, uh, my four brothers and sisters, my mom was a lot. But 12, okay. nah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know. Um, parents kept us together again, you know, real humble, always try to make sure that everyone was okay at all times. Um, and we just kept it going. Um, my oldest brother, um, my older two brothers passed away, I'm gonna say like three years ago, but it just, just kept motivating us to make sure that the next one was okay. The next one was okay. And, um, um, God, you know, just good, uh, kept us together. We, um, live not too far from each other so we always make sure at least once a month we we get together we go to breakfast we have a uh, dinner together you know just to have that family bond is just so important these days because it's so bottom line what i love to say and i always say it to kids is that the devil's alive and we just gotta keep him away from anything that we do keep him away you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. uh, there's so much negativity out here that it's always biting at you, and we always fight to get off us, get off us. And it, and it, we did, a, we had a great fight. Family is uh, great. Um, I have two kids. I have a daughter and a son. My daughter's is a um, police officer in Connecticut. Okay. My son worked for the post office for years and years. Um, um, no trouble at all. You know, I have great kids. They, um, you know, the struggles we went through, we went together, but. Um, both of them is on their own. Um, great jobs. Um, still come home to make sure dad and mom is okay. Um, my wife, I've been with my wife over 
45 years. We've been together for for the longest, but we've been married going on like 38 years now, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't tell you how important that is. Just knowing that you have a strong backbone behind you is just like a blessing to know that you could turn around and knowing that the person behind you is just fighting and struggling with what you're struggling with and always have someone to talk to to get the get everything off your chest and back is just a, a great state of mind. And um, a further home and relationship and kids, um, I'm proud to say I was blessed. I definitely mm. was blessed because um, we all know all of us go through our bad times and good times, but we go through it together. It's never a separation. If I'm doing good, we doing good. If they doing bad, I'm doing bad. And that's something that we try to keep together at all times. It's not nothing that we try to like I would say, you know, yo, much don't worry, I'm gonna do this by myself. No, we're gonna do this together. Like let, let's let's go through the good times together and let's struggle together to make sure that all of us is okay. And um it just worked out so well. And um, you know, I, I went to boys and girls high school. Mm. I graduated from boys and girls. Then I went to Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. Um, didn't work out too well because I was young, running, doing crazy things. And I went to the, I went to the army. I went to the service. Then I came home, and um, then I started, you know, the family life with the wife. Um, right now, I'm still employed. I'm, I'm employed by New York City Parks and Recreation. I've been there over 25 years. Um, I'm in charge of every park in Brooklyn. Any park in Brooklyn that you see with the leaf on it is my responsibility. Mm. So that's why. I, I'm always able to find good players because I'm around the park at all times, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as soon as I see somebody dribbling the ball, especially a young lady, hey, come here one minute, let me talk to you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, it, it, it just uh, um, was a blessing to have that job and, again, just working this long and maintaining what I do. And um, a further athlete myself, I definitely was never a great basketball player. I'm a softball player. Um, like I said in my last uh, interview, what's um, that? What's what's softball? You know, um, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> but I'm quite sure you know about it because if you if you with the um the people you mentioned, like I know I could throw a name at you, Ray Haskins and Lloyd McCory. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. USA. Brooklyn, yeah. USA. That's the family I'm from, and we just dominated with the softball. And I'm not true my own horn, but. I was one of the best softball players in New York City. You know, okay. Because again, any anything I get into, I try to go hard on. And um, it just kept me out of trouble. Um, being around Ray Haskins and Lloyd McCory and Lloyd B. Free and these players just kept me going. And then again, just the wife. The wife, you know, when you have a, a strong backbone behind you, you know what I'm saying? And that's definitely what I got, you know, is yeah. It's more than a marriage, it's a teamwork, you know, and um I cherish that to the day that I leave this earth, you know. Yeah. And um, and, it, it, and the crazy thing is um yeah, Mont Vernon was known particularly as you become an adult. Softball became big. Um because <laughs> we we had a lot of my cousins uh who came from North Carolina up, up here end up playing for the Hawks. Right in 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 uh in Mount Vernon, the Mount Vernon Hawks, uh, and they love you know they they were professionals at at at, at softball. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> okay, okay. They, no, no, they took it seriously. Like I'm sure, like you did, you know, pack the family up. You know, we going to the tournament, or we are having the tournament. You know, you eating at the softball game. That's you know, what it is. Yeah. And it's all, and all day. day, all day. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all day you get out there nine in the morning. Don't leave to eight o'clock at night. Yeah, yes, that's the life, definitely, definitely. And I said, you know, I, a lot of them guys, man. I saw some guys play softball. I was like, man, they could play for the Yankees or the Mets, man. That's how yeah, good they were, yeah. man. So, you know, yeah. A couple of guys that I played with, like this, is one player I never forget. His name is Big Dennis. The name was Dennis Jenkins. He was like 6'9", 280, just mm. incredible. You know, hitting the ball from here, 10 country blocks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and it was just a great atmosphere because um, we played at a park called uh, St. John's, uh, St. John's Recreation is a park. And, you know, you played 10 years in there and there's no more, 
it's all family now. Just a matter of, all right, we already know we're going out this Sunday at 9. You're not leaving to 9. You know, talking mess. After that, you know, you're going to drink your beer. You're going to have fun. All right, everybody get home safe. And it's, and it's crazy because for you to do this constantly, constantly, constantly for, for 10 years and all the love, and you see people just growing up, growing up, it's mm. just a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing that everybody is just having a great time. Uh, you don't have to worry about no trouble because we're all there having fun, cooking for each other. You know, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter who cook. You're <laughs> going right. to eat. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter who cook, you know? So that was definitely a time that I definitely missed years ago, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that was, those are awesome times. I used to go watch my cousins play. And it was incredible because um, during the summertime, um, my mom used to take us you know, you had to get older to remember this stuff. But, uh, you know, every 4th of July, we would head to North Carolina and my mom would drop us off and we wouldn't come back until um, <laughs> and, until, you know, it's time to go back to school. And 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 my grandfather loved baseball. Right. And all my cousins, man, we should go out to the softball field. And like you said, all day they cook, they're cooking out. They got the grills out there. They're cooking out. You know, everybody's having a good time. And they and they, and they playing amazing softball. They, and, of course, when they moved from North Carolina, of course, they started the Hawks Club, you know, in Mount Vernon. I mean, okay. they even turned it into like a – they had a – I don't know if you remember the McCray brothers. Of course. Yeah, Rodney and Scooter McRae. Rodney and Scooter McRae. Yeah, they went yeah. to high school. Um, Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon, yes. It, yeah. Yes, I know him very well. Yeah, and, 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 and their father, they ran and owned the Hawks Club. So they were big-time investors in, in softball. They played. His father and uncle played. I mean, and they had... And all the people that came up from North Carolina used to come play for the Hawks, you know. Okay. <laughs> no, because you, you, because you, you, you're talking about one thing. You said you're in the field of, uh, you know, when I first came back home after playing basketball, one of my one of my first jobs, and I remember this as a little kid. We playgrounds were big, growing up, mm -hmm. right? And every playground had a playground teacher, right? And they were teaching stuff and, you know, giving checkerboards and you play kickball right. and you play softball. Yeah, yes. and yeah you did everything. So rec recreation was important. Definitely. Right? Uh, I mean, because, uh, you know, you had one boys club or one boys one boys club, but you during the summertime, the playground was the club. You know, the, the recreation, you know, you recreation uh, basketball leagues in the winter. Right, mm -hmm. the summer leagues in the summer, right? The recreation department was hosting all kind of stuff, right? Um, and and so you're in recreation, right? You know how important that is, how important every playground is. You Definitely. know, every playground has to be clean, you know. That's right. Uh, and and you know, kids that come to the park have to be protected. So Definitely. so every playground has to be fixed. Right. And and uh, recreation was big, you know, uh, growing up. And Definitely. It's, yeah. It's so a great, you it's, a, it's a major thing. I don't mean to cut you off, especially that um, with the way society is now, we got to keep these playgrounds, you know, open and clean for the kids to get off the corners. You know, it, you know, we always talk about I'm not too much of a talker when it comes to kids because I'm a doer. You have a lot of people that talk and say a v c and d but when it's time to get it done it's not done you know kids is my life kids is my life I, um if you come in my car right now i have probably eight sets of uniforms and the reason why is because if i go by a park and see kids playing and two they don't have the same uniforms i'm giving them uniforms mm. it's just you know i just believe in giving you know like it's just in my heart and um again i probably said this before i come from a big family we struggle and for me to have the opportunity to help someone that is struggling, but I can make a smile on their face by, and I could just hearing you talk and I could tell you a real sports guy, you know what a uniform means to a kid. Oh yeah. I mean, without a doubt. I, I, yeah. So, you know, like 
when the kid get that first uniform, it's like glory. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's just I keep them in my car. I got six basketballs in my car. I got <laughs> I got I got probably 20 pairs of shorts. And it's not because something that and i don't want no reward it's just something that i enjoy doing you know and it's just uh the kids these days and it's just some of them not just as fortunate as we is and for us to have the opportunity to help them and um the smile on their face and for them to go home to their parents saying look mom look dad look i got a shirt this and that some things you just never forget i would never forget the first uniform i got never <laughs> i still have it i still have it you know <laughs> so you know it, it's a blessing and you know that's why I'm, I always, um, and my girls, and go just going to the girls thing, I always try to be positive, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, as soon as you walk out the door, negativity is smacking you in your face. But um, yeah. I keep I keep God in my life. I keep um, faith in my life. Every time I wake up and I hit the floor, I drop to my knees and thank God that I know my mission out here is to take care of someone else. And that's what I'm going to keep doing. You know, that, that's just a belief in that, you know? Yeah. And, and we were talking earlier. So let's, let's, before we get into this whole, the whole basketball thing, I want to continue with how important and why we should support recreation. I mean, not mm -hmm. just yeah for kids, it's important for kids, but yes. recreation, all those parks are important for family too, as well. As, yes. as you, yes. as you spoke earlier, in, in in the parks, they they got softball fields in in, in those parks, and so where we you, mom or dad or whoever's going out to play softball gonna bring the kids with them, right? Yeah. So all these parks are are important, and you mentioned a few parks earlier uh, that you're involved in. Talk talk a little bit about those those parks, and 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 what they, why we need to keep supporting uh, recreation. And 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 upkeep these parks. And, and here in Brooklyn, we have, and and you said it. We have Brownsville Recreation. We have St. John's Recreation. We have uh, Red Hook Recreation. We have Sunset, and all of these. And if you know the name, all of these is from projects. And which when I when I say projects, I mean big buildings, numerous nine or ten buildings, where a lot of minorities are at, uh, single parents. A bunch of single parents, let me clear that out, a bunch of single parents that without the parks and a parent feeling safe that they could let their kid come outside, which at this time, it's hard to have that trust, but with what's going on in society right now is bad, but we just can't give up. Um, every one of my parks, I visit every day, just to the point of them seeing me and the respect that give me and... Um, we all, I know it ain't a park that I can't go to that I mentioned that they like, yo, they go coach much, they go coach much. Yo, how you doing, you know? And um, I always make sure it's three or four people in that community that stays in contact with that park because you, you always gonna have an outsider that's gonna come in and try to throw bad things. But now you gotta face these three guys and these three guys ain't there to be, be tough. But yo, this is my park, this is where my, Mm. son come this is when my daughter come please go somewhere else and do that you know right um games and the, the kids if we don't have these hawks and these games and they don't even know the games that me and you used to play coco levio and hopscotch and jump the horse they don't <laughs> we, don't, we don't teach these games to the kids that could just they don't know that to just change um Safety to these kids in the parks. Um, a bunch of pro basketball players, coach, and you would know. Um, uh, playing Rucker Park, playing we have a park over here that's called Gersh Park, Browns Real Rep, but you know, Connie Hawkins, Law Be Free, um, Nate Achi Wall, all of these play there. So, if we don't have these parks, it's just taking a lot, a lot of different things away from our people. And when I'm saying our people, I mean, our minorities that can't afford to go to long island to play coach and can't can't go to pay for these trainers but the park is there if the parent feels safe mm -hmm. knowing that their park is there and is is drug free and um you know um keeping it clean which means a lot just opens the door to so many different people man and you know, you always hear Brownsville and Best Style always go at it because they always <laughs> yeah. like, yo, my park is better than yours. My players is better than yours. Let's go at it. 
but it's always love. And then that's that's the big thing about it is that um here we have so many different areas, Brownsville, um, Brownsville, Canarsie, Red Hook, Bed Stuy. That it's definitely rivalries, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and yeah, us yeah. A, yeah, you know, for years, even before me, you know. But the kids, um, we can't we can't. The worst thing that could happen, especially here in Brooklyn, and I, and I keep saying that, is that we don't take care of our recreation areas. It's just like, mm. it's just like, there's certain places you could go that don't have it. So we got to util- utilize everything that we have to keep these kids on a straight line. And um, it, it's definitely a task because um, I had an incident that happened not too long ago that a parent, and it's crazy that a parent uh, says, oh, I'm with my kid every day. The only time I don't see my kid is when he go out. I know my kid didn't do this. I know my kid couldn't do that. And I'm like, Ma, I'm not blaming you. I said, all of us as parents try to teach our kids the correct way. But when the kids go out and if you, your kid is around a bunch of people that are doing negative things and your kid is a, is a follower and wasn't trained to be a leader, that's going to that's gonna determine mm-hmm. where he's going to go. I try to always be a leader in everything I do. If I don't like, there's nothing wrong with saying no. I don't think so. You know, and that's something that we got to definitely teach our kids. And I'm on a mission and I would never stop. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, we're just throwing out some stuff to make sure that we continue to support recreation. Yes. Uh, par- I say parks and recreation. That's and, what it is. Parks and, and, and recreation. And, yes. and, and, and particularly in the inner cities. Right. Because mm-hmm. uh, we will spend a lot of money upstate where we can only go to the park. <laughs> You know when it when it's nice out there, when or you got <laughs> when you know all those national parks that we, you know, where people rarely come to, right? People rarely come to those parks, but the parks that are most important are the ones that are in your neighborhoods. Your playgrounds and parks are so important, and I don't know if you guys knew this or not, right? Is that you you by law have to have open spaces no doubt about it right you you I can't just you say right. okay well i'm gonna put a building here i'm gonna put no, no you can't put a building where that playground is at where those parks are at because you have by law have to have open spaces where You're people can right, where people can congregate and people can go out and have fun and kids can go out and run around you know and be free yeah and and so uh Talk, how did you, uh, you know, the transition, how do you transition into, okay, I know you're doing parks and recreation, but you transition into, uh, was no limit. Right. And, and then not that you don't deal with young men, but you transition into dealing with young, with young girls, (laughs) start dealing with girls and the whole basketball thing. Yes. Um, I worked, before I became the position I'm in now, I worked at St. John's Rex and the, the Ray Haskins and Lloyd McCorvey. Mm. And um, they all did boys. Um, a, a, another older brother named Lester Roberts, rest in peace, he was also a mentor of ours. So we always, they, they always did boys, but it was always one or two girls in the program. And every year it was one or two, one or two, one or two. So it came to a while where Coach Lloyd and Coach Haskins said, yo, much." We don't want you around the guys no more because all the guys want to talk to you, talk to you. You take the girls and you go ahead. So, you know, I'm like, okay, that's, that's not great. You know what I'm saying? So I started off with like five or six girls, um, you know, junior high school. Um, we played in a couple of lo- local tournaments and um, it just gradually got on, you know, me being access to a gym so I could always have workout and training and stuff like that. But I'll be the first to tell people I'm not a trainer. Um at the age of 59, I'm still a student of the game mm. um, because it's nothing about baseball you could tell me about. Anything about baseball, I can answer. But right. um, when it comes to basketball, I'm still a student. Um, I just happen to be blessed to have good leaders around me. Um, and um, I continue that. And then my daughter got into basketball, so that even pushed me more. My daughter like, Dad, you know, I want to play basketball. And I'm like, oh, that's great. So my daughter came with me. And then we just, again, St. John's, which right across the street is a, a set of projects called Albany Projects, which um, is a big, big complex, uh, a bunch of single parents, uh, kids that could play basketball, young ladies, but couldn't afford to go 
play in Long Island or New Jersey or them, um, which you already know with the AAU programs at that time. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, when you talk about AAU, you know you're talking about money um, because they travel and all that. But um, I continued. I stayed with it. Um, my daughter went to Benjamin Valley High School, and I, I happened to be lucky and got the job there for a year. Um, it just the girls just kept gravitating with me, gravitating with me, and we just kept going hard, going hard. And before you knew it, I come to the gym and I got 20, 30 girls in there. I'm like, yo, what's going on here? But, <laughs> you know, but here in Brooklyn, we didn't have too many female programs. And if you go back in basketball, you had Riverside. You had the Gauchos. Those mm-hmm. are legit programs. But those are programs where you had to travel to get to. But St. John's is right across the street from your house. So I just kept it going, Coach. And before you knew it, we played in a couple of tournaments. And we didn't do too well, but we kept going. But what kept everybody calling us to come is the way that we act. We was never disrespectful. Mm. We was always on time. We never forfeit. Um, When we was winning, it wasn't no craziness, you know. So, you know, when you run tournaments, you're not you looking for teams like that. Being respectful, that means a lot. And that's right. one thing to this very day. And, and right now, as you know, I coach grown women. I determine respect. You could be the best player in the world. If you're not respectful, you will not wear a No Limit Shamrock shirt. It just it just, just won't. Between that and education, and yeah, no doubt about it, that speaks for itself. <laughs> um, and we kept it going. And um, I had so many positive people around me saying, Coach, you're doing a great job. And parents got involved. Yeah, yeah, see, now, now, see, you pushing me back there, Coach. Come on now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, um, and as you keep going in the game, you know, like more people hear about the positive things you're doing and the way that you carry yourself. And, um, and right now, Coach, I could say um, it came from high school. And then um, my daughter went to college. She went to Farmingdale. And then okay. uh, I, went, I went into the next level because I got to take care of my daughter. She couldn't play there, so I went to the college level. And that's when I started getting the older women. But my team that I have to this very day, Coach, I had since they were 12 years old. Mm. So that's why I try to preach that. It's not talent. It's chemistry. The chemistry that No Limit Team Shamrock got is – something that you can't teach it takes time and um the chemistry that we have in the togetherness is unbelievable it's something that i go home and just feel so proud of me knowing that if something going on with one of my girls it's going on with all of them and you don't have that no more coach you have so many mm. pulling away from each other oh you got a problem well you deal with it no nah, not here we are gonna deal with it and um mm. and the leadership that i created on this team um, with what I have now with a Renee Taylor, which your wife know very well, Nikki Avery, Nadia Duncan, which is from Mount Vernon. Yeah. Man, you was ready. You was ready, coach. You was ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we got Nadia Duncan from Mount Vernon, which is just an animal. Like, she is that that person right now, you know? I have um, a Monty Tate. A bunch of my girls go overseas, which is a blessing because I have a bunch of girls on my team that, um, um, you know, Coach, how can I say, single parents, hard, but their talent is going to make their life better. Mm. And that's why I always tell people, you have a lot of people that's telling you to do certain things. Take care of school. If right. Take care of this education. Sky's the limit. You know what I'm saying? And especially us as minorities is that. You might not be the best player, but if that education is right, it's nothing no one can do. Education is power. That's right. And I use that to my advantage. Um, I'm not the most educated person, but I've been around a lot of educated people. So me being a great listener, it's not too much you could throw by me, but I have no problem with asking questions either. I have no problem with asking questions. But the team that we have now, Coach, is, is I use this word all the time to different coaches because they be like, Coach, you got the same girl since she was, they was 12 years old, you know, chemistry, you know, like it's it just the chemistry, the love they have for each other. I have three girls on my team that have kids and you know who their godfather is, me. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, everybody yeah. that have a kid is much a godfather, but that's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Is um being united, uh coaching, you know, and as a parent, and what you know, and then that's why I love speaking to your wife at the spiritual part is that um they need someone to talk to too. We all need someone to talk to. Yeah. And um yeah. I know I know more of they business and more of they problems than their own parents. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that happens, you know, I'm not going to say it's a good thing, but just speaking and knowing what's going on in a person's life and even if you can't help, but just to be able to guide, you know what I'm saying, is very important. And basketball blessed me to the fullest, coach. I can't even tell you. Yeah. Um, yes, when I was young, I thought I was that tough guy. I was that guy that was trying to, because you had a Benz, I wanted a Benz, which you know, I had to get a rude awakening. Like you can have a Benz and I have a Toyota. We going to the same place. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, and with my team is like, I don't even call them a team uh, coach because now when people say, how many kids you got? I got 45 daughters and I got two sons. <laughs> 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 this, this is how I consider them. You know what I'm saying? Like just to make a long story short, one of my girls is in Spain right now and there's a seven hour difference. And uh, her first game was the other day. Her game was at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> All 30 of my girls was watching her at 6 o'clock in the morning. How many people would do that? Oh, well, not a lot of people unless you're part of the family. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, and just the support that we give each other is crazy. And um, it, it's just it's a life, a life thing. And I... <laughs> And everybody tell me like I'm 59, coach. I'm proud to say I'm 59. <laughs> and um, if if your sneaker game is better than mine, something's wrong with you. Ooh, okay, okay. And the so, reason why my sneaker game is that way because my girl try to outdo me, and I'm not having that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, you know, man. Many people don't know how important sneakers are. Oh, listen, they're not having that. Every time I come, they know they say, "Let's see what you got on today. Let's see what you got on today." And when I told your wife in my, you know, I, I live in on Tap Scott Street in Brownsville. It's just me and my wife, but I got three bedrooms. One bedroom is just for my sneakers. I probably got over 380 pairs of sneakers, which don't make no sense. No sense at all. Because I'm not going to win. But every time I see my girl, all right, I'm going to get those and I go get them like a crazy nut. But it's all love, you know. <laughs> it, 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 it's something that I love, Coach, and me working every day and able to take care of my family. And that's that's what I love to do. So that's what I do, you know? And, um, yeah. You got coach Mike Hammond out there. Uh, he's shouting you out. <laughs> and, and then my brother, you know, of course my wife is shouting you out. And then my brother Curtis, he's always, he's in Fayetteville. He said, he was, he's going to see you next week, next weekend in <laughs> Greensboro. <North Carolina. laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. And I just want to bring this to your attention coach. Um, me having Nadia on my team and I hope I'm not going ahead of the broadcast. Um, and me meeting your wife and giving me the opportunity to do this, everything that I have done coaching, I coached for 25 years. This is the experience of life, what I'm doing right now in this WABA. You know? <laughs> because you know the difference, Coach, from, I call it um, outside basketball and organized basketball, too, too complete. Because, you know, right. recreation basketball is a lot of things you can't do. With it. And when I first got into the WNBA, I had to ask the rest, can you please explain to me the rules? I don't even <laughs> know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, we can tell you never did this yet. You're absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> but my girls did it, but not Coach Munch. You know what I'm saying? And um, right. And then what happened was cause the first game that um, I represented Team Shamrock, we went to a, a gym, and there was five coaches on the other team. You know, you have a shooting coach. You have a defensive coach. you have. So when I walked in by myself, the referees came to me and said, Oh, how you doing, Coach? I said, where the rest of your staff? I said, excuse me? <laughs> they said, where the rest of your staff? I said, I'm going to say, where's your other coaches? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, but, you know, just having the opportunity to do this is just, it's just a blessing. And with, with your wife by my side and the team, I, and your wife, her team is unbelievable with Marsha and Coach Mike and Chris too and them. There they go. The best that ever did it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's a blessing, and that's why uh, I find it very important to carry myself and carry our organization 
the way we do because once she told me why we representing Team Shamrock, and um, I didn't meet. I do soon. It's just gonna be a blessing, and I'm I can't wait to meet the mother of of the Shamrock daughter that this happened to. You know, I, I didn't meet her yet, but I'm definitely that's one of my goals to meet her. You know. Oh yeah, you will, you will, and I, let me let me say, uh, you hear Coach now as we transition. Uh, talking about the Mount Vernon Shamrocks, uh, which is uh, a basketball team inside of the WABA. Uh, you know, uh, the founder, right? The founder and president or CEO is Marsha Blunt. Uh, and, yeah. and uh, you know, Marsha and, of course, my yes. Marsha and my wife played, uh, won the first women's state championship uh, for the state of New York, uh, back yes, in yes, yes. back in whatever that year was. But, uh, <laughs> watch yourself, Coach. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. <laughs> uh, one of them years in the eighty. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> oh man! And you know, I was playing in the league. Then I was playing with the Nets, and I used to tell my teammates, right? I was like, "Yo, we gotta go. We gotta see a go see a basketball game." And they were like, a basketball game, man? Like, what kind of basketball game? Yeah, man, my girls' team in Mount Vernon, man, is awesome, man. You got to go down there and watch them play, you know? So uh, Marsha was playing back in the day along with my wife. And, um, yo, they were awesome, man. I mean. I hear that. Yeah, 1981. And they were, <laughs> they, they was blowing people out, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, yeah, and you know that I became kind of you know passionate about women's basketball, uh, you know back then to see because in my hometown girls were just doing what they just doing their thing, you know, right. and um, you know so to see Marsha who at the time was one of the first women to own a men's basketball franchise in the in the ABA um, back a few years ago. And then to see her transition now from you know, not only having the men's team, but now having the league, you know, starting the uh, the WABA league is very important. As as many of you know, as I'll, I'll explain this is just as quick as possible. You know, uh, this is not like men's basketball. I mean, and each and every day men get more opportunities. There, there are more leagues popping up. There are just more opportunities. You know, when women coming out of uh, from playing college basketball, right, there are like 12 teams in the WABA, WNBA. There's like 12 teams, but like you got hundreds and hundreds of girls that are graduating each and every year. And some of them may uh, want to have an opportunity to continue playing because they have this love and passion for the game. Right. Well, the WABA, uh, which is a semi pro team, gives them an opportunity uh, to continue to play, build a resume. Right. Have the game, have their games live stream. Right. And for an opportunity to uh, either be seen by a WNBA team or to go overseas. And uh, over the last three years, I'm sure we hear more about this a little bit later. Over the last three years, um, you know, we've seen a number of girls come from the WABA and go overseas. As Coach Munch just mentioned, um, you know, one of his young ladies is over in Spain, right? And and so is, is this is another tool, another vehicle uh, for for young women to get an opportunity to play the game, continue to play the game they love. And Coach Munch, uh, this partnership, I mean, because each and every year, right, each and every year, the first two years, uh, is always a problem in re not only getting a team together, but retaining a team each and every year. And, and man, Coach Munch was a blessing, you know, because <laughs> he, he already had this team Together is like a a, a a match made in heaven Definitely. and to bring no limits and the Mavern and Shamrock together and and continue to develop this family, which uh which is just awesome, man. Um, 
And so, man, we, man, you were excited. My wife was excited. Every, the team was excited, you know, about, about you coming on board and that whole family atmosphere that they preach, right? You, you brought it to us uh, this year. And now you guys are in the playoffs and heading to the final four. I think it's not maybe next week. I think it's, yeah, the, the 29th. The 29th, yes. Yeah, the 29th to October the 2nd. Going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina, right? Going to be playing for the championship down there. Going to be an all-star game down there, man. So it's 18 teams. I think it's 18 teams in the WABA, right? Actually, more teams in the WABA than they are in the <laughs> WNBA. So, and Coach Munch, congratulations, man. You were Coach of the Year. No uh, cap, your first you. year <laughs> and coach of the year. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I, I was telling your wife, no way that was in my mind, but God is good, you know? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. You know, so, we, so yeah, you were talking a little bit about before we, uh, um, you know, before we bring Brian on. Um, so talk, talk about what you, you were just talking a little bit about your experience, but just talk a little bit more about that experience of this year playing in the, uh, you know, coaching and, and having your players play in the WABA. Yeah, it, it's a great experience. Um, rules are different. You definitely got to understand the rules. Um, and again, it's just organized basketball. Um, our conference, our, our, our regional this time, we had like one or two teams that dropped out, but we play against this team in Maine and we play New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey was a very athletic team, which you could see they young. They just got together. The team from Maine, um, they just started just like we did. Um, we played them twice. We beat them the first game. We lost to them the second game. Then we had to go up there, and then we beat them to go to the Final Four. Um, it was um, just a very, you know, a very great experience for myself. And my assistant coach's name is Mike Moore. Um, He's a more of an X and O guy. I'm more of a, yo, let's just go out here and do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I never, and I, 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 I tell your wife before, a clipboard, I don't know what a clipboard looked like. I never wrote a play <laughs> in my life. But when, when you have, when you play together so long and the chemistry that we have and having someone like Renee Taylor, Nikki Avery, Jennifer Blanding, um, Nadia Duncan, it's not too much you could really not teach them, but want to tell them because they also humbled them, worrying, not worrying about themselves. You know, like passing the ball. It, the making long story short, this one girl wrote a quote to our team, and she put it on Instagram, and it went crazy saying that she loved to wake up in the morning knowing that she passed the ball to her team to make her happy and win. How many players say that? Right. Usually, <laughs> they want to put it in the bucket they sell. But her, her happiness is giving you the assist, you know? And um, and just like recent, we, we had a game, and we, we did, again, we not we lost the game before, like, a couple of weeks ago. And what I love about our team is that you can't even tell if we lost because we walking out the gym like we won, and that is just hard to find that. When you got young lady, te young, even men, kids, whatever, when you always looking to blame someone, oh, but when we was winning, everything was fine. But when you lose one or two, it's like, oh, much made you lose. Or this made you never hear that here. The next thing is, I right, win the next game, coach. We all right, let's go. And just the confidence that we have in each other is just, it's crazy. And um, the first time, and, and I've seen it in your wife, and I've seen it. When I coach, um, coach, when I sit down, I say very little. And they be like, coach, we went to a game, and you was losing my 16, and you were sitting there like, you know, I'm like, <laughs> they okay, they all right. And before you blinked your eyes, we was up three. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's never, and you know, playing the game of basketball, it's not over to the last whistle blow. And um, we, we play so hard. We put it all out. And um, it's just a matter of coming to go to work. I, I call it work. Every time before the game, I say, okay, y'all ready to punch in your time card? Punch in your time card. We got to go to work. And, um, and the thing up in Mount Vernon is that the reason why my team loving to go representing Mount Vernon is it's something new. For them to say they in Brooklyn, say, nah, yeah, we from Brooklyn, but yeah, we representing Mount Vernon. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's real humbling to say that because how many, you have a bunch of people in Brooklyn that don't even know 
Mount Vernon. What, what you talking about, Mount Vernon? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and um, the way that the family, your wife, and that whole staff just took me in and told me, yo, much listen, it's on you. You do what you gotta do. We don't want it. We, you tell us what you need. We're gonna make it happen. We just want you to win. And I said, thank you so much. And you know, <laughs> the freedom they, the freedom they give me is just unreal. And the way they support everything I do, they support everything I do. Like even even with the No Limit family, even though we family, they always say much. Time. Let me know when you play. Coach Mike came all the way to Brooklyn, the Rose Classic to watch us play. Um, it's just good to know that you got that support system and. Um, um, we're looking to bring it home. That's all I could tell you. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. And, um, you know, we we want to talk a little bit more about the WNBA and then we want to bring Brian in. Um, okay. Brian's going to jump on here. How you doing, uh, Brian? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian's the WABA Director of Operation and Officials. Okay, that sounds official. No doubt about <laughs> it. No doubt about it. Yeah, so so Brian, welcome to the Blueprint, and and uh, you know, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, you heard Coach Munch, uh, his first experience with the WABA. Um, I'm sure you've been doing this. You you guys have been doing this for a little minute here, trying to help this go to the next level. So talk a little bit about the WABA and where you are and where you think you might be in the future. Okay, well, thank you. First of all, Coach Munch, Munch, congratulations. I love, you know, I don't say this a lot, man. There's five words every time I see Munch, right, and our, his team. I love watching them play. Five words. <laughs> they just play like a team, you know what I mean? Just I heard you talk about uh, your leadership and, 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 and Avery and, and Renee, and just it, it's, it's just awesome, you know what I mean? Thank like you, when you so see much. A good coach, good leader, good organization. Um, and just great players, you know what I'm saying? Players got to so play, you know? <laughs> but um, to 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 kind of understand where we are as a league, okay, it's, you know, let's just jump back about seven years when we wanted to start this. And, um, you know, everyone, you know, it's really something out of a movie, right? You know, where you talk about, you know what, we wanted to start it. We didn't really know how. We just knew that there was a, uh, a large group of uh, post-grad young ladies um, that needed an opportunity, okay? And so we just, Marsha uh, and everyone, and, and she, she, she looped me in and said, you know what? Let's find a way to create an opportunity for these young players. And that's exactly what we set out to do in the very beginning, okay? So talk about the very beginning, we only had seven teams. We had the team in Mount Vernon. That's right, Coach Munch, right there. We had the team <laughs> in Jersey. We had a couple of teams in Maryland, uh, DC Cyclones, who's also punched a ticket into our final four. The Atlanta Angels were there, and we had a team in Orlando. We had seven teams, okay? And um, that first year, I'm telling you, man, you want to talk about a tough first year. Uh, we held that league together by text messages, group text messages, phone calls, um, you know, you promise, pinky promises. We did everything to hold <laughs> that first season together. And, um, you know, it's really just about doing what we say we want to do. Marsha, you know, listen, Marsha's our captain. OK, Marsha, Marsha Blunt's our captain and we follow her, her lead. So uh, what she wanted to do was, one, do exactly what we say we wanted to do. So if a game was going to be played at 4 p.m. on a Sunday, it was going to be played at 4 p.m. on a Sunday. OK, real simple goals, but that's where a lot of leagues fail. Uh, and then two, we really wanted to live stream everything. So um, if we were going to create a slogan, like we're a league of opportunity. We had to have a platform for these young ladies to showcase their skills and talent. Okay. And so we wanted to make sure that we live stream or just had the ability to live stream slash record all the games. So that was our first year. We had a championship game, the team in Jersey, Jersey expressions um, ended up winning that Aaliyah Hanford a young lady who was a, a guard out of St. John's was the one that kind of just spearheaded that championship game. And then, um, Erica Jones uh, over there, Rutgers, came through. I think she was the most valuable player in that championship game. She just was on fire, you know what I mean? So, um, so you know, we grew. Seven teams, first year, 12 teams, 15 teams the third year, right? The fourth year, you know, fifth year, that, that was our COVID year, okay? And then that's where, you know, 
we took everything for granted, didn't we? We never mm. thought, you know, that that, oh that basketball would have the ability to just be ripped away from us. Um, yeah. But through the grace of God, you know, through great owners, great ownership, great people, uh, we were able to, through that COVID year, continue. Okay, and so that 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 was that was through Marsh's leadership. We were able to continue through our COVID year. We ballooned to about uh, thirty, almost thirty teams, almost you know, uh, in a COVID year, which is out, mm. which is crazy. Crazy, uh, that's crazy. So, and then you look at last year. Let's just talk about last year. So we talked about having a league of opportunity. When I signed on, coach, I heard you talking about you have players that are going overseas, right? So last year, a league of opportunity, we had over thirty players, thirty-four, I think, is the exact number of players that go that went from our WABA uh, over to sign professional contracts overseas. Okay, so talk about creating a platform for these young ladies to collect the check, right? To continue playing this game. That's that's, <laughs> that's, that's important, saying, man. That's, that's tax right, that's free right. too. Let's talk about tax free. Um, so um, that, that's the, the, those are the things that we were uh, we're most proud of. And also officials. We're a league of opportunity for officials as well. We had over six officials throughout our conference go on go on to sign Division One officiating deals. Okay, mm. at the you know at at the Division One conference, and we had two coaches go on to uh, coach at the collegiate level, having an opportunity at our league. And that's just there. We're not even talking about broadcasting. So it's a league of opportunity collectively, all you know, basically all the way around. So. Um, that's about our league and a very short nutshell of a history recap. I'm sorry. You know, uh, um, Marsha says I talk too much sometimes. Marsha, if you're listening, <laughs> I'm trying not to talk too much. Okay. Oh no, you were actually perfect. I mean, you very detailed, very to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, t so talk to us real quickly about uh, ne uh, well, the next week or the next couple of weeks. The final four. Talk about that and what that looks like. Okay. Well, we're super excited for this. So this is the second year um, that we decided to do this. Okay. Uh, so we have four regions within our league. Okay. So this is the second year that we're doing this final four format. Okay. Where we're taking the uh, number one team or the top team in each particular region. So this year um, we have four regions. We have the Northeast Upper. We have the Northeast Metro Division. We have the Southeast and we have the Midwest. OK, those are four regions. So what we're doing is that we're taking the top teams that have won their region and we're bringing them to Greensboro. OK, I heard you guys say the 29th, right? It's the 30th, Friday the 30th. Okay? Friday the 30th. So, I mean, listen, if people, if people want to show up on the 29th and camp outside because, you know, it's going to be sold out, uh, you're welcome to it. OK, it'll make it like a, a, a Black Friday thing where people are camping out. <laughs> But um, so we're we're in Greensboro on the 30th. And so um, the first. So not only do we have the coach of the year. OK. And, and literally, <laughs> much, you know what? You are my third favorite person in the whole wide world. OK. You're right behind Barack Obama, <laughs> Michelle Obama and Coach Munch. OK. So I want to make, sure make sure that you know that. OK. So, I appreciate um, you. I appreciate you. Definitely. <laughs> appreciate yeah. You, uh, but Coach Munch was the first team to punch their ticket to our Final Four. You want to talk about going up there. You um, were really humble, right? Um, uh, and um, Patrice, I'm sorry. I had to bump you down because Coach Munch, Coach Munch is three, okay? Like, hey, wait, I thought I was three. But um, <laughs> you have such a great team. And um, see, I'm, I'm, I'm an old school basketball player, right? I love oh, a yeah. good point guard. OK, a point guard who kind of is the leader, the point guard that kind of gets everybody together. I know you have outstanding bigs, outstanding wings. You have all that. All right. But you got a point guard. OK. And again, yeah. I again, I just love watching you guys play. All right. And so you went up there and the L.A. Maples is a really good team. Josh, the owner up there, they do an outstanding job. I mean, yes, outstanding yes. as far as. The management, the sponsorships, they got all the politicians in Maine. They have yeah. they, they're pre-selling tickets. They're doing everything in their power and they were ready for you. Okay, let's be clear. They were ready yeah. for you. But you know what? They weren't ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were they wasn't ready. <laughs> and, and, and the organization, 
and I speak for the mate who's very professional, treated us with all the the best tr we got there. They treated us well. They took care of us. They fed us. They told us where the hotel was at. Everything about that organization is professional. Um, me and the coach met on when I first got with Team Shamrock. Nobody wanted to scrimmage him. He was saying that the teams in his area, I like, oh, we be there next week. We got in our cars, got up there, we scrimmaged him. Um, we we did what we had to do to him. We came back and he like, <laughs> you know, he like, oh, we're gonna get y'all again during the season. I said, listen, I just want you to know I was missing four or five people. He's like, oh, well, me too. I said, all right, okay. So me and him became real good friends. I spoke to him yesterday. So that's something else that I respect the WNBA, the WAVA is that other than basketball, the friendship that I'm meeting new people just to keep life going and relationships is very important in what I do, you know. And I appreciate the WAVA to the fullest, you know, to the fullest. And my whole organization, Um, you would think my team is from Mount Vernon, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. my... <laughs> but uh, the yeah. referees, it's something that my team said, and not because I'm talking to you, because I'm honest in everything I try to do. Um, the referees that you brought to us, we just love the way they explain. You know, you got some referees that just, they make a call and we'd be like, yo, we're like, listen, we don't want to talk. Every one of your refs are like, okay, give me a second. Let me walk to you and explain because there's rules that we don't know. We, we, we used to, I call it ghetto basketball. That's what we call it, <laughs> ghetto basketball. And that's why, you know, we play so physical and all that. But they was like, coach, you got, you can't do this. You can't extend your arm. You can't do that. So, uh, definitely, I respect the officials for helping us out, and um, we hope they keep helping us out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on, all right, all right. hello, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hey, 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 Brian, you may be in a little bit. You you may be in a little bit of trouble, man, because you. Nah, I, nah. I, 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 I don't. I don't seen two people put up. They were number three. I know, and you know what? And um, <laughs> um, I'm really in trouble with one of them because Katrina Carr is my fiance. So I don't. I'm really in trouble there. Let me tell you, man. <laughs> no, you gotta say. You gotta say to Katrina. You you hold, you hold a special member. <laughs> Thank you, Logan. Yeah, you hear him? You hear him? Okay. You 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 in a class all by yourself. You ain't gotta be in that three. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's definitely a great. And again, I appreciate the ownership for Team Shamrock. Um, it's just again, I, I coached for twenty five years, but never, never, never coached organized basketball. Everything with us is recreation basketball, like me and you spoke about, coach. A bunch of tournaments. Um, I coach in Rucker. I coach in Dykeman. I coach in Watson. But seeing a professional atmosphere that the WAVA in it just is so humbling. I love it, and I, I can't wait to get to North Carolina. Can't wait. Yeah, and uh, you got a question up here, Brian, about what's the differences uh, in the WNBA? Okay, so um, <clears throat> a quick little five-second history. When you look at the rules and the rule additions that the NBA and the professional the, 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 that they have kind of acquired, uh, the backcourt violation call, the lights behind the backboard, the red lights behind the backboard, and, and you know within the league, all that started in the ABA. Okay, the three-point line, huh? As as critical as that is, that didn't originate in the NBA. That started in the ABA. So. Fast forward to where we are right now, and, and, and Coach Munch had kind of alluded to some of the, the nuances and the rules that we have. We have seven seconds to get that ball up the court, all right? Get it from the back court to the front court. So what does that mean? You better have some good guards, okay? You better have some really good guards to get that ball up. And then what we do on top of that, because we want to create a fast-paced, high-scoring game, we also incentivize the defense to play defense in the back court by the signature rule. Our signature rule in, in, in our league is called the 3D rule, okay? So everybody says, well, what's that? What's that? What's that? So the 3D rule is a rule that incentivizes the defense to play hard in the backcourt because if they get a steal in the backcourt, okay? If they get a steal in the backcourt and that person tries to cross over and they rip it, now when they get in possession of that ball and they go up for that layup, right? Instead of that particular field goal attempt being worth two points, it's a two-point layup, we plus one. Holy smokes. So now a layup is now worth three, right? And guess what? You get that same steal in the backcourt and you raise up for a three, bang. That's not just a three-pointer now. 
That's a four pointer. Mm. Okay. So you want to talk about how leads can evaporate, leads can extend, yes. and leads can evaporate like this. Okay. And keep in mind, we have a four point play at half court. But if you get a 3D or a turnover that originates in the backcourt and you line that puppy up right at half court and you swish it in, that's a five point play right five there. That's a five play. point yes. basket. And so you want to talk about uniqueness of the rules fast pace when, when when there's a turnover in the backcourt our referees have a signal called 3d 3d right uh, we have a red light that comes in in the arena so that everybody in the world knows it's 3d it's 3d you know what i mean so it's, it's a big deal so yeah. uh, we really uh, you know that's that's our signature rule you know we have quick throwing rules and different things like that but the 3d rule that's our signature rule and we also have six files thank you patrice um, <laughs> six fouls. So in our league, believe it or not, we give six personal fouls. But even at the six personal foul, you don't even foul out. Whoa, what's going on there? So we want to give the ability for the teams to keep their best players in the game. So if you decide if a player um, gets six personal fouls, but you, but the coach, Coach Munch, if you want to keep your best player in the game, they have six personal fouls. They now become what we call a six foul player. And then what ends up happening is that any infraction that they do, any hand check, any little thing that they do, that's plus two in the ball for the other team. Mm. So it's a, it's a deep penalty, right? So if there's a six-foul player on the other team, you need to go at that person. You got to go because at they them. really, they really can't touch you. You know Definitely. what I mean? But, you know, that, you know, but if a coach is to keep that person in the game, that means that from an offensive standpoint, that person is so dynamic, you need to keep them in the game. So, mm-hmm. you know, in, in our league, we really want to showcase the talent. Again, it's a league of opportunity. Uh, thank you, Patrice, for um, for mentioning that. I actually forgot about that. But, you know, we have some quirky rules, but we love our quirky rules, and um, our officials love explaining them. Thank you much for putting yes. that out, okay? Definitely. Appreciate it. Yeah, that. And, and thank you for explaining the difference between the NBA, WNBA, and the WABA rules. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I like it. I love it when it was almost like a siren. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's beautiful. We love it, especially when you have. And I, again, everybody know how I speak highly of my team. When I had, when you have shooters like I got, boy, when we steal the ball, is we not looking for no layers. We looking for that four point. <laughs> yeah. And, that- and what's crazy, I don't mean to cut you off, Coach. Yesterday, we seen a great game on TV. Um, Midwest against, um, who was that? Um, Midwest West Michigan Sp- Elite. West Michigan Elite. Lady mm. Z. Lady Z. The, she, I remember her name. We practiced with her. Lady Z. They was down by like, Coach, they were down by like seven. Before you knew it, they was up two. She hit a three-pointer, which when the, when the light was on, so it's four. They stole the ball, but that was a again just seeing great basketball. You know the opportunity. You never out of a game. You never out. Mama Z. Mama Z, baby. That's right. <laughs> Mama Z. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Brian. Thanks, man. I appreciate you okay. coming on. Uh, and yes. you know, like my wife is saying, uh, we have three all stars. Uh, the Marvin and Shamrock. I have, yes. I think Nikki Avery. Uh, Nadia Duncan. I think there's one more. Monet Johnson. Monet Johnson. Yeah. And so I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm going to be there. Okay. You know, okay. I'm, we we we're going to be down there. You know, my brother <laughs> down in, in North Carolina, so they're going to run over too. You know, and, and check us out, man. So it's going to be it's it's going to be a great week a great weekend. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Brian, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you popping on, man. All Thank right. you, Brian. Thank you for having me. Thank All you. All right. Having no problem, man. Yes, sir. Have a good night, Brian. Later, buddy. Later. Okay. Now, I don't know if my my wife, um, I don't know if she is available. She's working behind the scenes, but if she is available to uh, pop on, let's see if she uh, if she's upstairs. I don't know. Maybe she'll come downstairs, or she maybe she'll pop <laughs> on and you know talk a little bit about coach and ownership you know owning the my vernon shamrocks named after samoya yeah right yeah. and and her mom nadine ellis 
you know, uh, and so let's talk a little bit about that and then talk about uh, being, a, you know, having a team of owners and and then this year bringing on this wonderful coach, Coach Munch. Well, it, thank you for having me. It's really um, it's been a really great opportunity for us to have Coach Munch become part of our family. What I like about it is that he talks about team no limit family and it fit in because we're the Shamrock family. And so, you know, it's just it just made it perfect. So I even changed our logo to say, you know, um, you know, Shamrock's no limit. You know, I told yeah, Coach when yeah. he came in that we were going to make it no limit Shamrocks or Team No Limit Shamrocks and, and or Shamrock No Limit because we wanted to make sure that we recognized his work prior to coming to us. So we have, as Brian said, been part of the the, um, the WABA since um, its inception in 2017. And as I've shared with other people um that in 2017, around April, Marsha came to me and, and was telling me about her venture, her vision to start uh, the WABA. And I was not interested. I mean, I said no so quick. It was like a beast <laughs> on you. I, I was like, no. And she was like, but you, I was like, no. I mean, I said it real fast. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't think anything more about it. And one day, um, you know, after Shamoya McKenzie had been shot on uh, New Year's Eve uh, in 2016, I was part of the Shamoya McKenzie Foundation with her mom. And um, Coach Dave Newton was in, the, we were in a meeting and he said something like, I miss my shamrock. And I was like, shamrock? Who who's that? And he said that's a, that was her handle. That's what we called her, Shamrock. I couldn't get out of the meeting fast enough. I jumped on the phone. I called Marsh. I said, "We in." I said, "Our team is going to be the Mount Vernon Shamrocks. We're going to name our team in honor of Shamoya McKenzie. Uh, Shamoya was um, Jamaican, and so we made the team colors, the colors of the Jamaican flag, you yes. know. And we were the Mount Vernon Shamrocks with the Jamaican flag colors, and it was all in honor of Shamoya. And all of our jerseys had, you know, our logo had the number thirty in it because her favorite player was Stephen Curry. And so number 30 was her number. And so we, you know, all, you know, we represented. And the first year was a, was a great year for us, um, even though, as Brian said, there were only seven teams. Um, but Rachel Jones was one of those officials that Brian had on, on, on a group. But, of course, you know, Rachel's from Mount Vernon. So she calls me up one day. And she goes, you should do a breast cancer awareness game. She goes, you know, I'll help out and, and fundraise for you to get pink jerseys and we got pink uniforms and we had an amazing breast cancer awareness game. There were so many people, the stands were just filled and we honored so many people. And little did we know that the following year that we would be actually honoring Rachel because she passed away with one year later from breast cancer. And, you know, it, we didn't get a chance to do it this year because the games got canceled down the stretch. But I always remember, you know, our pink jerseys are in honor of Rachel Jones, but our overall jerseys are, are, are for um, Shamoya McKenzie. And so we do what we can. We don't make any money. I'll be honest with you. This is really, we spend not yet. Right. We spend the money. We don't make any, but we do it so that we have concessions. We have funds. We have to pay for the Boys and Girls Club. I want to shout out um, Mel Campos, who is the uh, ch um, chief professional officer for the Boys and Girls Club, Mount Vernon, who gives us the, the gym. And he has a young lady there, uh, Donna Marie, who covers the floor, the, the house for us while we're there. So I'm going to say thank you to them. Our original ownership, Mia Williamson and myself and Crystal uh, Dorsey Dames, um, were, were, you know, the original owners. We added Deirdre Wallace-Hines this year to our ownership team. Um, and Mia, you know, due to health reasons, wasn't able to continue on. So really, Crystal, Didi, and I have been, you know, holding down the fort. You know, Marsha is the, uh, is the, is the, is the, um, uh, is the, um, the, the president of the whole league. So she has her hands in every team, you know, in every team. But of course, you know, Mal Marsha grew up in Mount Vernon. So she's, you know, always going to have some, you know, love for, for things in Mount Vernon, but she can't have any connect with us because <laughs> she's the, you know, she's the president of the league. 
But, you know, I think it's really an awesome um, thing for her to have that vision and to make sure that there was a team from her hometown represented. And that's why the Mount Vernon Shamrocks were born and continue on. I'm grateful for those who support us. Moms Demand Action is always there supporting us. Um, They represent nonviolence in uh, Westchester County and the state of New York, and they support us at every game. Nadine McKenzie, Shamoya's mom, is always there supporting us. Ms. Walters and Ms. Glazuski are always there supporting us you know the first year our entire family did all the work your mother cooked (laughs) your mother cooked michelle did the concessions or the door you know curtis was the security you know we had (laughs) you know nadia's brother was the was the announcer like we just put the family to work and everybody did pieces it was a little harder the following years um you know, we've had our, our previous coaches. Um, we had uh, Jermaine Austin and Randy George and, and Coach Ron. Um, you know, myself, I coached a year. Um, and then Coach uh, Coach Mike coached a year, Coach Hammett. And and then this year, you know, Nadia calls me on the phone. Nadia Duncan, she's a coach. You know, you got to meet my coach, Coach Coach Munch. Yeah. I, you know, she's just talking about this Coach Munch. And, she, you know, and we've always had the battle in previous years because – not here would be like, oh, I, got, I can't be there because I got to play for Coach Munch. I'd be like, who is Coach Munch? And why can't, Why you keep missing all my games? Because <laughs> she would not, she'd miss a game for us to play for Coach Munch. So <laughs> the best of both worlds was when she said, Coach Munch is going to now be with us. And he said, and I'm going to make you guys number one when you got a game. And he was good to his word. And he came and he brought his team. And the only thing that I'm disappointed a little bit is that we haven't really gotten a chance to spend time with the girls. I, that's what I want to do. Aaliyah Hanford got hurt on the first game, broke her leg, broke her ankle at the Boys and Girls Club. And I stay in touch with her and check on her on a regular basis. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, um, you know, imagine if we had her also on our team flowing because <laughs> if she didn't break a leg, she would have been right there playing with us coming down, you know, to uh, North Carolina. You know, so I'm excited about the team that he's put together. I'm excited about where we're heading. And I'm proud of you, Coach Munch. Congratulations. Thank you I'm so proud, much. I'm proud of Nikki and Monet and Nadia. But what I also understand is Jade, is could could have done that could have been in that role q aquilin Aquilin could be in that you know sill could be in it you know i mean the whole team could be in there we we had this girl come play for us from west virginia she was like six three she swatted everything out of the bat out of the room but then she went overseas so she went overseas and Alyssa lawrence was with us and she went overseas so we had two of our players go overseas as well as brian was mentioning so it's been really fun and i'm looking forward to going to greensboro and participating in and seeing all of our family come and support and that coach munch bring it home so you know thank you coach munch we're dd i know dd i know i'm dd's probably logging it she's on (laughs) but i want to shout out my sister because when i called her to help she jumped in and crystal jumped in i mean between us we have a a great sisterhood and i'm so proud of um my sister and um and crystal and our relationship because we're unbreakable and mike hammond is our president mike hammond's been my big brother since i was um 13 or 14 years old and everything we do he's a part of our lives so he's the president of our team he holds it down for us and um, i'm proud you know for him. So we have a really solid group of, of owners and we're excited about the WABA and I, I'm excited about this year, but boy, we're going to have a problem next year. Cause I got all these people wearing me out about what, what are we going to do? I got Steve Bender asking me questions. Caitlin Gleason has been a support. <laughs> Our mayor has been a support. Brenda Crump has been a support. And you know, next week we're on people before politics. We are, we're getting out there and we're getting known. So, you know, thank you coach much. Cause you helped you know, solidify our name. So we're so proud of you. No, I think I Nadine is you. Nadine is going to Greensboro. She's coming to Greensboro, <laughs> so you'll get a chance to see her there. Great, great. Now I appreciate y'all having the trust in me and um, giving me the opportunity. And uh, like I was telling your husband, um, something new to me, like, you know, like from left to right, used to playing coaching outlaw basketball to this here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Even my wife, she'd be like, Munch, don't worry, everything gonna be okay. I say, My wife name my wife name is Valerie. So I'd be saying, Val, I gotta learn the rules. I got she like relax. Everything just, and her favorite line is 
Just tell your girl to put it in the hoop and we'd be okay. I said, okay. I said, <laughs> when you went up, when you went up to uh, Maine, the one thing I said was, you know, you 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 like the officials more when you have a big lead because at this stage of the game they don't matter. Right? <laughs> Check you, that know, out. Check you know, that out. don't don't ever let the official have to decide the game. If you playing your game right, you don't have to worry about the officials. You just play the game. You know, so I don't ever want the official to have to make a call at the end of the game to determine whether yeah. I win or lose because I want to be up by enough that the wish what, what they, when they're blowing the whistle is to say the game is over. <laughs> yes, and it's crazy because when you when you text me that at halftime, remember we was only winning by six. Mm -hmm. So when we went inside, I showed them. Mm -hmm. I said, "Yo, look what our owner wrote." Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my players said, "Much, we only up six. She might not let us play no more. We got to do this." <laughs> and before you knew it, it got really ugly real quick. You know, yeah, thirty-seven point third third quarter. I was like, "Ouch." Yeah. Yes, yes, that was that was that was humble. Yes, yeah, so. yeah. but I, I'm but, yeah, I'm grateful. So you know, no, so we, thank you. We, we appreciate. And you, it, I got you new know. shirts. I got new shirts ready for you to go. Yeah, but okay. I know they, I got them new shirts. You got your new shirts, and yeah, we we're ready. We gonna we gonna come in there looking, you know, ready to go. Listen, and, and I try to be as humble as I can, and I watch the other three teams play. You know, because you know I'm on my homework, like I'm been doing this. <laughs> with, and um, again, everybody know me. I'm not cocky. I'm just confident. We bringing this home. <laughs> well, once again, we want to let you know, September 30th, the WABA finals. You can get a weekend pass for $50. Um, championship game is $15. The All-Star game is $15. And the fi the final four, which is Friday and Saturday, you can get those tickets for $25. So if you're looking to get tickets, also, um, if you want to um, donate or anything to the Mount Vernon Shamrocks, I'm going to also tell you we have a, a, a cash app. It's PWMore63, cash app, dollar sign, PWMore63. If you want to make a donation to the Mount Vernon Shamrocks, you can do that so that you can help us in our journey um, to go down uh, to North Carolina. So we are looking. We had a. We did have like my son made a one of those popcorn pop up popcorn things yes, was that was blessing. supposed to be up. You know, it's supposed to be up today. Um, but just simple things to try to raise funds. I'm going to shout out some people who have. You know, a lot of people have um, come forth and said that they wanted to make donations to us. I don't want to. You know, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to put people on blast, so I won't. But there are some people that have made direct donations to help us for our transportation we need to have two vans or a sprinter van so if we know anybody that has a sprinter van that wants to get us down to uh <laughs> to greensboro or help us out in the journey because you know we want to go down there and we want to go down and represent and go down with class um so if you want to just hit me up um you know um you know mv shamrocks mv shamrocks30 at gmail.com that is our e our our uh email address mv like mount vernon shamrocks s-h-a-m-r-o-x 30 at gmail.com and you can join you can help and make donations to uh dollar sign p w m o o r e 63 at cash app if you want to make donations to help our cause so thank you we're looking forward to just really having a great time and as coach munch yep. said he and the girls are looking forward to bringing it back to bringing it back up to the northeast region no doubt about <laughs> it i appreciate it so uh coach month it's been my pleasure this evening uh thank you so to much. get to know you and thank you. you know i know you're going to be busy over the weekend and uh you know we'll meet over the weekend definitely uh, will you know i know i'm uh, long long as y'all playing i'm gonna let you just be focused <laughs> you know and i think that when when it's all over you know we get connected you know what i'm saying yeah okay. it's definitely so. uh, i appreciate the whole the whole lead the WNBA lead to just giving these young ladies the opportunity to further their career even not just mount vernon um i follow the atlanta team i follow the the um the Green Road team, I follow New Jersey. I follow, you know, just giving these young ladies the opportunity to do what they love means so much because like I'm I'm not too much of a spiritual person, but I believe in God. And my thing is that um we have to open doors because it's the devil is alive and we just need to let them do what they love to do. And um 
and I'm proud to say that with the family I'm in right now, with the Mount Vernon family and the No Limit family, the togetherness that we got, we just going to go at war together. It will never be nobody personal problem. We, we're going to go through our good times. We're going to go through our bad times together. And, um, and it's just something I love and I appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity. Yes, sir. So Brian, thanks a lot. Um, to my lovely wife. Thank you. And to yep, coach man. Munch. Munch. Yes. And man, I'm looking forward to the final four, right? I'm excited. Uh, can't wait to see you guys down there. It's going to be awesome. An awesome weekend, man. So, uh, yeah, Yes. Uh, yeah, man, you're in the Greenboro, Greenboro, was Greensboro, uh, North Carolina. If you're in the area, right, or you know somebody in the area, hey, man, hit them up, man. And uh, I think we're going to put a flyer on on the uh, on the Facebook, on the Facebook page, man. Hit them up. Tell them to come out to the game, man, and support these uh, these ladies uh, who are fulfilling their dreams. And, Definitely. Uh, yeah, let's go see some good basketball and wait for that red light to come on. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, again, um, this is Lowe's Moore. Uh, again, thank you for your support of the Blueprint Podcast. Man, I look forward to seeing you guys ne next week. I got my good friend and, and golfing buddy, Wes Matthew Sr., on next week. Uh, you know, uh, you know his, his son is in the NBA. He was in the NBA. We got drafted, not on the same team, but we got drafted at the same time. You know, he was with the Atlanta Hawks and I was with the, the New Jersey Nets. And we're going to be talking about uh, life in the NBA. And, uh, you know, so I'm looking forward to next week. Uh, and until then, man, I love you guys. Bless you. Same here. And, 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 and remember this, right? If you wake up tomorrow, make it your masterpiece. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Thank I you, like everyone. That, definitely. All Thank right. you so much. Take care now. Good night. Thank you. Good night. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E dot com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's Moore and on Facebook at Lowe's Moore Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the kitchen is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for insignificant.